under a minute. So let's get ready, folks. Let's go ahead and start making noise right now. Exactly. Let's go ahead and start making some noise. Let's get crazy up in here. And ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, 2 p.m. SLT, and you are here at Hell Cats Arena, so you must be here at SCORN, and I am, yes, yes, let's go ahead and make some noise, leading up on the road there to Hawks Endings, I am your, your co-host and co-commentator, the voice of Detroit, Natas Grimmore, of course, sitting with me is... Hello everyone, I am Ziva Firecaster. I am new here today, guys. So please bear with me, but yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. And welcome to the show. And of course, I'm the one and only Maynard Smith, also calling the action tonight here. And we've got one heck of a show for you folks here tonight, just like every Sunday. 
Oh, uh, I mean, it's just, it's going to be kind of phenomenal. We're going to see what goes on on the road to endings. Um, I'm actually kind of excited about the card. How about you guys? I really am as well, because some of these ladies, you know, I've heard of them, but I've never actually seen them in action yet, so I cannot wait. This is definitely looking like a very exciting card today. From what I'm seeing. Well, apparently I'm here from production that Mash One is ready, so let's go ahead and get this get this show started, shall we? Bring 'em on. And our first combatant, a one one of WMD coming out of Wonderland, standing at six foot two, weighing 180 pounds, is Siva, the Mad Prom Queen. She makes her way. Now that tiara she's wearing on her head, um, it gives her a right. She hasn't cashed it in yet, but it's kind of like the uh, contract in the briefcase. She has a right to challenge anybody for their belt here at Hawks. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know what she's waiting on. Maybe she's waiting on endings. I don't know. But we'll see what happens with that. But right now, it's definitely a match. It's, she definitely has a match tonight. Her opponent coming at a like that at a weight of a hundred and fifty pounds. This is Miss Misty. Sometimes you have to slap them in the face just to get their attention. <laughs> Well, apparently, uh, I don't know uh, if this was actually a good idea, especially the way that Misty attacked Siba last week with that chair. Well, if she attacked Ziba with a chair last week, Ziba is going to be coming out for a little bit of, um, shall we say, revenge this week, then? Uh, as it comes out, she does a ground tackle, and... Definitely to see if she's pounding away at Misty, 
there's definitely a little bit of resentment there for that uh, attack last night, last week. Well, wouldn't you if somebody attacked you like that? And the bell finally rings. I mean, she went for that attack at, without before the bell even rang. Um, Ooh. But uh, it seems like uh, oh, Missy with that elbow strike, definitely trying to get Siva off her. And and a big boot dropping C, but now that's the thing about it is is Misty is not not dumb. She actually has scouted out Siva long before she made this uh, challenge. She she watched her and you know said that she was you know the future of Hawks, but you know that's back when she was WMD. But she kept watch, just kept scouting her out just for this case. Well, that was a smart move on her part to scout out any potential opponents that she may have. So, yeah, that was a smart move on her part. And, of course, Siva doesn't ask her, didn't get a chance to really ask her favorite question, but apparently Misty got to ask it first, is why is a raven like a writing desk? Siva makes her way to her feet, and will make her way to Misty. Yeah, it looks like she's a, already feeling those stumps quite a bit here. Siva hits her with that drop kick. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, is... A fist drop by Siva with pinpoint accuracy, but the thing about the thing about these two component these two opponents is one's known to go psycho, the other one is known to be a little mad. Um, hence her name, the Mad Prom Queen. Well, I kind of look at it like the wise words of Nora Mates. We all go a little mad sometimes, haven't you? And she looks like she's going for that under that double underhook face Ooh. buster, dropping Misty on her basically on her face. Ouch! And ever since she's since Siva has joined WMD, apparently the fans have not liked her. But she goes for a pin, one, two, and only a two count. Not a bad effort at this point in the match, that's for sure. I mean, you gotta think about it. She's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miss A. Ray. Siva has. And so is Misty. But then turning down... And, folks, please... Uh, if you have any... If you have a high script... As there's another pin count. If you have a high uh, script count, please, let's go ahead and lower that down. Um, apparently there's, we got, you know, we're having some lag, I guess, so please just let's go ahead and take off any heavily scripted items. But it looked like, uh, Misty tried going for that pin, got a one count, but, uh, Siva was able to turn it around. You gotta think, uh, it looks like, uh, Misty is standing up. And it's starting to fight back a little bit, it looks like. Well, Misty used to be the Hawks champion until Dangerous Curves, where she did lose it to Christina Krovac. So, I mean, there is some skill there. I mean, obviously, there. And the nice DDT by Miss Misty. So, obviously, there is a reason why she is a former Hawks champion. But Siva wouldn't have that tiara if she wasn't a worthy opponent either. So I wouldn't count her out yet, guys. Siva speaking of schoolgirl. You had to edit that for the for the gender of this fed, huh? <laughs> 
mean, you can't really call it a schoolboy, so I guess he did. He made the right call. He's calling it a schoolgirl. And he's definitely here, not boys. <laughs> and Misty on the attack with a kick to the gut, but it looks like, yes, she's going up for a vertical suplex and showing the strength of Miss Misty as she holds her there for a minute. Yep, let the bro let a little bit of that blood run to the head and drain her a little more before you send her down. That's right, when you got a head, a head full of blood and the body just kind of loses some of it, so yeah, I can, we can definitely see that. As Willow is checking on, checking on Siva, but of course Misty doing not letting her get a breather with a pickup. Off the rope she goes! And Misty with that cl vicious clothesline taking Ooh. Siva off her feet. Siva not looking too good now at this point. It's showing, definitely showing, I mean, she's got more experience than Siva when it comes down to this. But Siva with that European uppercut catching Miss Misty off guard. Knocked yeah. her flat. That is a good sneak attack, that's for sure. And Siva being, don't know what part of that, but being so nice as to assist her up. Oh, and Siva comes running into that super kick. Ouch. Yeah, Misty just returned the favor there, it looks like. <laughs> and that, bout to, uh, that super kick bout took Siva's head off. Ziba's definitely feeling that one. Yeah, a little groggy to get back to her feet. And a belly to belly suplex. Ooh. Misty's not even giving her time to catch her breath now. Not with, and then also them outlaw stomps there. Definitely, like you said, definitely not giving Siva time to catch her breath, but she goes for a pin. One, two, and only a two count. Well, one thing I will say about these two women is they're both tough as nails. I've seen, you know, I've seen Misty go through hell. There was, I've seen Siva go through hell. So definitely... You know, this is not going to be an easy match for either one of them. Yes, you know, bringing her back to her feet, whipping her again off the ropes. Oh, and Siva, though, with that ground tackle, just kind of spearing her, but just at the same time going for a pounding on her face. And more ground and impound in here. It's a one-sided cat fight. <laughs> All it's missing is the kicking and clawing. Oh, um, beware. That may happen later. Now, Siva's got her picked up, but Misty catches her with a European uppercut of her own. And definitely bringing it down, and it seems like Misty's became the favorite in this match. Well, as the old saying goes, turnabout is fair play, and she definitely showed that there. As Misty goes ahead and picks her up. Oh, 
Oh, and a standing power bomb by Misty. Mm. Referee checking on her. I don't think Zeba's ready to give up yet, though. I don't think this is an I quit match. No. Oh, now Misty's backing out to the outside of the ring. What is she doing on the... Uh, wait a minute. She's apparently looking underneath the uh, ring apron for something. What is she grabbing over there? Apparently she's telling the ref to shut up, but she's got a chair! Uh oh! Uh -oh. Remnants of last week! I don't think this is quite legal. Seeing how it's not a no disqualification match. Not to mention the referee is looking. Ouch! A blatant an out, DQ! And out comes WMD! And a chop block to Misty there! As we've got Kendra and Miss A. Ray coming out. And it looks like a blatant choke there by Kendra, but it's not, I mean, the match is over. I think we're starting to see whose side these two ladies are on. Oh, as Steve is grabbing the chair. It looks like Siva is going to get a little bit of payback. I don't think this is going to end very pretty here. Willow's telling her you don't need to do this. She's trying to, you know, keep these ladies under control. Miss A. Ray performs a, yeah, what she calls payday. Two power bombs there. Where is Siva going with that chair? Oh! She attacks Kendra with that chair. After they came out to help her, and then, oh, I see what it is. She ends, ended up, because WMD ends up leaving her in the ring with Misty, and apparently, uh, it, it, it's basically, <laughs> wow. A little payback there. And it, that's what it really seems like, uh, you know, maybe Miss A. Ray was right, not to the fact that she isn't really, you know, tough enough to be part of it, because she proved that last week, but, yeah. Yeah, last week she was pretty much left for dead, and didn't even get a bottle saying pills here. As Missy Chet tries to get up, but she apparently is uh, not exactly with this. She falls right back down. And it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a uh, discussion going on with uh, Siba, which I think is going to be removed from WMD at this point. Yeah, well, I'm not pretty safe to say. <laughs> Well, I'm not real sure what happened between those ladies last week, but yeah, um, evidently Zebo wasn't happy about it. 
Well, I ended up leaving her at, at the hands of uh, Misty there, and she kept getting chair shot at chair shot. So we'll have to wait and see how that actually works works its way out into uh, into endings. And of course, well, I'm not sure what Honey is doing out here because she don't have a she her match ain't until later. She's not after that bag that you swiped earlier, is she? Sam, why don't you go ahead and read for her? And he says, okay, okay, cut my music. How's everyone doing tonight? Let's make some noise. for any blunts here. Well loved by the fans here, Hawks. Okay, I suppose you're wondering why exactly I'm out here tonight. I know, I have a Hellcat title shot tonight with Legata, but I'm out here for another reason. Wonder what that other reason is. As you all know, my luck with Tag a Teamster at Hawks has fallen well um, off the mark. That is true. First was Somalia with Maposa.
and she ran off to Mexico with my stash. Uh oh, wonder what kind of stash that was. Don't think too hard. <laughs> oh boy. Then there was Couch Sprouts with Sybil. had some fun but it never really worked out since she never got never go, would never go to pick up my weed for me because she was le leveling in Zelda oh my god <laughs> it is, she is called the gamer girl well that's true And then we had boots and bongs. Believe it or not, the fans picked that name. I actually came out wearing a cowgirl hat and boots for weeks. And what happened there? Sound like a pretty cool name to me. I think Stacy took the old adage. Save a horse, ride a cowboy to heart, and rode off into the sunset. Well, then. <clears throat> Depends on the cowboy. <laughs> hmm. But I've had my eye on those tag championships. So I am not about to give up now. That's the way Honey Boys runs. She don't give up. Especially when she's got her mindset on something. Or when she smokes the right green. <laughs> So, without further ado, let me welcome back, after some time off to nurse a broken arm, let's hear it for Michelle Snyder. Come on, fight back!
You can go ahead and continue reading there, uh, Siva. <laughs> okay. You're the only female at the table. So here I am back at Hawks after a couple of months with a broken arm. And now finding myself in the tag team division. But I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Nate, why is she looking at you? Let her, let her speak. You see, I met someone while I was in the hospital while nursing my broken arm that Ray caused at Dangerous Curves. And things he does to me, um, makes her shiver? Hmm. And as of last night before my return, myself and Nate's are engaged. What? Well, she wanted to surprise everybody, so I really didn't want to say anything. Wow. What? And here I thought we were friends. And you didn't even tell me. Jeez. Oh, she made me promise not to. She wanted to make the announcement tonight at Scorn. And with me tagging up with Honey, we are going to fight tooth and nail to take those tag team titles off the Fate Weavers. And become your tag team champions. Yes. And I'll be down here supporting you, baby, 100% of the way. Oh, please. Talk about a little, uh, little violence on its way to the, oh my god. <laughs> I can't even, wow. TMI. Uh. 
So anyways, we will let you get back to enjoying the great show tonight. Hope you all have fun. Now you see why I had you read it. Ay, 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 I still can't believe you. Ah. Yeah, man, you might want to watch your back for eight fate weavers in the next few weeks. It says, okay, time to get ready for the match. See you soon. Yeah, I think he just put a big old target on himself. What? Just saying, dear. It's been nice doing you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, well... No. Denied. Let's just say, expect more than one person to be taking your measurements pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I I'll take any congratulations you guys got, but until then, uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, match two. Let's see here. Um, we have Kamikaze Coco coming up. In match two, what just? Oh, hang on, guys, my friend froze. That's right, Kamikaze, Kamikaze Choko, tailing from. Okinawa, Japan, standing at five foot eight, weighing 132 pounds.
and what a what a ovation for Erie. Crowd still hasn't stopped. But it looks like uh, Chioko is look like she's ready as now they're locking up. And Erie with that wrist lock, but Chioko ends up getting out of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Still kind of a fast pace that I couldn't even see what, what actually happened. Erie trying the wrist lock again here. Wrenching at that arm. Oh, and follows it up with a back kick to the mush. Here he finds herself outside the ring. Don't worry, you'll both get invitations to the wedding. Here he looks like she might have taken a favor in that back after that bump. <laughs> mm hmm. Chioko is saying that she's <laughs> that she's waiting. But, oh, has, wow, ends up uh, missing that spin wheel kick. Kurt. Looks like Chioko is playing defense here so far. I'm not crying, thank you very much. <laughs> As right now, it seems like Erie is getting up a little frustrated. Now they're just punching away. Looks like Joko getting the better. Oh, back to Erie. Takes her down with an arm drag. She got. She missed the leg drop. Chioko showing up, uh, showing up uh, uh, how much of a match she is for Erie. You just said leg drop. I'm just wondering how her back's doing after that spill outside the ring. Well, she's back up now, so let's see. Ooh. But you gotta remember, in Japan, they have a lot of martial arts that teach you more defense than offense, and that's what Chiyoko is showing so far. As right now, though, they're showing a lot of offense, so she kicks Eerie in the gut, and basically bounces off the ropes, and does that, uh, looks like a flipping leg kick. At least that's what it sees from here, she goes for the pin. I think that was a right. senton leg drop. Oh, maybe not. Oh, and she uh, goes for a roll-up in. It just is, these two commands are so lightning quick. It's not even funny, but right now it's got we have uh forearm strikes Erie yep <laughs> back outside she goes Looking at that corner. Here he 
has Chioko right where she wants her, apparently, here. The monkey flips her out of the corner. And it looks like uh, Erie's going up to the red light district. About to get a little airborne, it looks like. No, it looks like maybe not. As Erie jumps down. Oh! But... Say belly to belly suplex takes her down. Thank you. <laughs> Twisting her around, it looks like she's got the Boston Crab locked in on her. Oh, but Erie is right there by the rope, so should have pulled her a little more toward the middle. As Erie grabs the ropes. But, to the count of, what is it, five or ten to break it up? Uh, actually, it's four. When she hits five, she will be disqualified. So she's got, that's the unfortunate part is, as the ref starts counting, if she can do more damage, she's got to tell the count of four. Oh, well, she's broken it up. But that didn't do Erie's back any good after that fall, uh, the tumble she took out of the ring. Well, Chioko needs to. Uh, they can do a number on your back. Well, she says let's do it again, but it looks like she's going to be pulling her more toward the center of the ring. That would be oh, a wise she... thing to do if she take her submit. Well, that's usually the case. I, I just wish she did it before she was too close to the ropes. Ooh, and that. And that series of punches, it seems to have knocked Erie for a loop. There's the Irish whip. Off the rope she goes. And down she goes. Holding that knee in pain. And that cross face. And right now, she's trying to get her tap, but... Oh, and Chioko's making her way to the rope. It looks like they're in the ropes there. And it's broken up. Excuse me, that wasn't her cross face. That's what she called... Well, it's called a LaBelle lock. I'm sorry. I've seen Erie put away quite a few people, uh, put away quite a few people with that lock. Thank you. Oh, big German suplex. Ooh. Folded her up like a lawn chair. Don't give her time to breathe.
Curry taking Kyoko back up here. And for the midsection in the noggin. And a and I and Erie taking Chioko against the ropes, but as Chioko came back, she came back with that clothesline. Oh, and she, Chioko saying that she's tired of the games and is getting ready. I don't know what she's going to do, but she's got her in a front face lock. Oh, dragging her to the middle of the ring. Chioko is saying to get lost. Oh, Ooh. it spikes her down. Oh it looked like she was trying, it looked like she tried to go for a, uh, I don't even know what that move was called. It looked like she tried to, to go for her Karana, but it looked like she actually DDT'd her. And she goes for the pin. Only a two count. A lot of fighting these two, that's for sure. Here he comes up with the leg sweep. But here he finds herself sitting there against the ropes. As she's complaining about her back, but Joko takes a ride out of the ring due to the back body drop that Erie was give Erie gave her. And apparently that may have hurt her back as well. I'm sure it might have. But Erie's telling the rough to go ahead and count her out. But that's the thing about it is here at Hawks we have a 20 count out rule and uh, so she has more than enough time to recover. Definitely does. Oh, I'm back to the outside. She goes after that drop kick. Erie not letting Chioko in. She's just kind of, <laughs> as she goes, can you stay out there now, please, and thank you. Such manners for a wrestler. Are, you, are we sure that this lady doesn't come from Queensbury? I don't know, but... You know, at least what, you know, she's, uh, what she said on the card is where she's from, apparently. Yeah, I thought Queensbury was in England, not Canada. Well, Canadians are usually nice. Oh! And that... They're drunk. <laughs> into the ring but it looks like she hit her with a punch that just dropped Erie
as Chioko's telling her to get up. <laughs> she even goes around, please. Wow, man, there's from both wrestlers here. Well, she seemed to ask it like a question over than just a statement. But all those those kicks, those martial art kicks to Erie, and took her down with a leg sweep. Now well, it's all that's wasting is here at home going so sorry, just like they're British. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, please stay down now. Ugh. Erie has that, in her polite demeanor, she knows how to get under people's skin by continually, oh, and still all them punches. Just beating away on Erie. And going with that discus punch, just knocking Erie off, pretty much back to the ground. But Erie does have that no give up attitude. That didn't look so polite. She didn't have the pinky yet. She was doing that. She goes for a pin. One, two, and three. And the winner of the match is Kawakazi Chioko. between those two, that's for sure. Go saying, come on, bring some bit next time. Here comes the time in the show for sponsors. Well, I think there's supposed to be uh, another match, but it seems that Lily's opponent, we don't know who Lily's going to be bringing out. We don't know who, who our opponent's going to be. Well, let's see here. Well, here she comes, making her way to the ring here. Love for Lily Martinez here. One of Hawks' most accomplished dress.
Ricochet is saying, cut it. Contest is. It seems that Lily has a mic. Well, I understand this will be a match for one fall. The first, a few words from Lily. Tonight I was supposed to come out here and make a challenge. I've been through and through the competition in Hawks for years. While the competition is strong, yes, there's only one thing and one person that I want. The Hawks Championship So I decided that I would bring Christina out here tonight. And it appears that she checked out early. Aww. Hello there, Mrs. Martinez. Here, I'll, I'll read for him. How's that? Uh, good, because I still get zero good. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Martinez, I am representing Miss Christina Krovac here tonight. And I realize that you were scheduled to be here tonight with Christina Ringside, but unfortunately that won't happen. You see, it was brought to my attention that you attacked Christina in the parking lot several weeks ago. That is not okay. And it is illegal. Christina not only wants to file charges, but place a restraining order against you. I'm not sure how that's going to work here at here at a place of business, but therefore, your Hawks Championship match at Hawks Endings is terminated. I never liked this guy either. But he needs to be careful. Um, excuse me? Now, oh, please do cooperate. Look, I have, I have this in my briefcase. Are you sure you want to get into the ring there, uh, Mr. Lawyer Man? I have this contract here. You must sign. It terminates your Hawks title match and approves and approves Christina's restraining order. Oh certainly. But I forgot a pen. Do you happen to have one I can borrow? Of course. 
he's taking her cooperation a little out of context. I'm so glad you're being so easy about this. Um, just sign right here. Anybody have it's a trap gesture? No problem. <laughs> I'm only going to take this, okay? Whoa, I think that's uh, twice now <laughs> that he's been attacked in this ring. All right, let's see here. I know I have something. Looks like she's going to burn it. And that's exactly what she's going oh. to do. <laughs> I guess, Mr. Lawyer Man, you can see what she thinks about your uh, <clears throat> contract. Why don't you tell Christina there's no more running? And that you can shove those ass ashes up your tight ass. Well then, um, I guess he, he may need to go to the court building to get another copy or something, but at this point he didn't get it signed. No. Ruby, Tuesdays? I think he got knocked for a loop there. Okay, I think uh, while they douse that out, uh, I think we go ahead and go with the sponsors. I'll go ahead and start. Okay. Good morning, Maxine. Sunday mornings on Second Life just got interesting with Good Morning, Maxine. Join us as Maxine brings... The excitement back to Second Life as she explores the grid and finds all the entertainment possibilities that it has that it has to offer. From fashion to nightlife, cabaret, even sports. Take a seat as she takes your hand and introduces what Second Life has to offer. Meet some of the, meet of the, some of the most talented special guests you are ever going to meet and even enjoy some ma some amazing performances. You will not want to miss an episode of Good Morning Maxine starting, well, it's already started, but it's at Sunday, it's on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good Morning Maxine is is a MY Studio uh, production show. Wanted to be talent featured, uh, message, uh, I'm going to just say Maxine, or click the ad board for more infor uh, information. Then we have Absolute Animations. Want to add some fresh and new moves to your matches? Tired of doing the same old thing that everybody else does? Then call on the best to create the best. The absolute best animations in Second Life are waiting for you. Contact Erie Resident for info and pricing for custom moves and visit the vendor located in the shop. Also, be sure to visit their main store location at Coastal Breeze. Click on their ad board for the landmark. Tyrus the Nova dot blogspot dot com. The blog by Tyrus Serevi. If you want to find out all about your favorite wrestlers, check out the blog by Tyrus. With over 40 wrestlers already interviewed and more coming soon. I am Tyrus Serevi for more information.
Then we have Honey Blunt's Designs. For all of those hippy trippy moments in and out of the ring, also specializes gear to make you look great in that ring at most of our favorite wrestlers federations and at next gen central please contact honey blunt's resident for information on that a bizzle nick uh nico designs ladies are you looking for some awesome mesh that you don't have to shrink your boobs for don't we all check out the sexy designs at abyssal nico designs on the career sim contact lalandra lancaster for more information Also, Ox t-shirts are for sale. Men's, women's, jackets, t-shirts, hoodies, brought to you by Honey Blunt's Designs and Absolute Nico Designs. Check out the entrance shops to show your support for Hawks. Um, that's abyssal, but you get the idea. Yeah. Also, like our Facebook page. Check out all the information of the happenings here at Hellcats Arena. Also, ask management for a fan tag. And remember, Hawks is like PBS. It's put on by generous donations from fans like you. So please drop a donation in the tip thermometer located on the wall. It says to my right. If you'd like to sponsor Hawks, at least up until endings, uh, click on the ad board on the wall or contact Honey Blunt's resident for details. Hey, we pay bills. Apparently, this is going to be main event style, obviously. I'll go ahead and get up in the ring there and uh, announce. So you just sit here and look pretty. I think I'm sitting on the fence instead of in the chair, though. <laughs> is it comfy? Eh, pretty much. Well, hopefully they put enough WD-40 on there to get rid of the rust under you. Well, I'm down in there in my chair. There we go. Much better. As I said, I couldn't see where it go. And ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your main event? As this is for the Hellcats Championship and is scheduled for one fall. High five. High five. Entrance there. 
this wow. The challenger, hailing from homegrown USA, standing at five foot eight, weighing 135 pounds, is Honey Blood. And the champion, hailing from an escape, escape from a pound in Mexico, standing at five foot eleven. Weighing 130 pounds, Logata Loca! And in, in the spirit of the Hellcats champion, the champion will name the stipulation for this match. It's an aerial assault match. Here you go, folks. Hey there, baby. Excuse me a second. So we now know the stipulation is an aerial assault match. I'm kind of curious on uh, what that match involves. You have to do a flying move out of all four corners. There you go. See, ask and ye shall receive. Nice. <laughs> Though I have yet to actually see how this works, but uh, apparently it's self-explanatory. And of course, Honey Blunts would pick green. Well, I'm sure that's not the only thing she picks green for. I'm sure it's not. So pretty much, very little the referee needs to do, besides count the corners. I think that has to be done in consecutive. Yeah, kind of like your strap or chain matches. Apparently they don't have to be consecutive, as long as each one of the corners is that person's color.
don't think I've ever seen a match like this before, guys. I haven't. The one that, the closest thing to it is, like he said, is uh, kind of like a, a strap match or a Texas strap match. Or the Indian now, those strap. I... Yeah, well, those I have... rope. <sighs> Anything along them lines, and it basically turns this uh, match, you know, you got to actually tag the corners. Except this time around, you have to actually uh, turn do a move off of it in order to get it to turn colors. Ah, right, well, I've seen a Texas strap match before, so now I kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on. All right, so you get the you get the idea then. Mm-hmm. Except they got to do an aerial move from the top rope. Trying to start things off as they circle up. As they lock up and Kind of starting off as a little bit of a slow match, but nonetheless, it works it works as well as uh, Gata ends up with a wrist lock into a hammer lock. Yeah, it's looking like my duties might be needed a little more ringside. Time to throw the hoodie off. Or maybe not. Ooh, looks like she's going to give her a abdominal stretch there. Followed by a hip toss. Bye, honey. And then the Acapulco Gold. As right now, as you see, the uh, corner number two is green. High five each other before before they start again. Now rocking horns. And with that headlock takedown there by Gata, looks like a, and it's a smart strategy there by Gata trying to keep Honey Blunt's uh, grounded. Right now it looks like Honey Blunt's is trying to stand, get back up to her feet.
There she goes with that it. Irish. Throw her into the with an Irish clip. Yep. <laughs> and with a backbreaker at that, it looks like God is going up for going up again, going uh, that, going up this time. As it looked like she tried for a flying splash, and yes, it does. She actually connects. So now corner three is red. So we got a red, a green. All we need is duct tape. <laughs> for, for what? I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> well then, um... <laughs> Duct tape? Seriously? <laughs> oh, red, green. Uh, 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 I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Anyway, as, as Gata does a vertical suplex on Honey, that was a good reference. It took me a minute, I, I swear. <laughs> hey, we guys from Iowa will love our red, green. <laughs> That was good. Surprisingly, I know exactly uh, what you were talking about. Is Honey with that leg sweep taking Gata off her feet? Honey is trying to pump up the crowd. Looks like she's doing a good job of it. Is she just going to sit there and stalk her for a little bit? I think she's waiting for her to get up. Ah. As Gata slowly makes it to her up to her feet. Uh oh. She hits that. Do it, cried. <laughs> Ooh. And to answer my question, yes, that does count. Um, move from the top rope, apparently. I believe that gives us another green there. The referee confirms it. Yep, and you can see right there, that corner is lit up green, so Gata needs to hurry up and, you know, do something to even the odds, so to speak. Well, she's got her tied up in a headlock right now, so yeah, we'll see. Well, you gotta remember, two down, two to go. Or three to go in Gata's case. And he's asking her if, if they were ready for this, but I'm wondering what she's got planned. There's the Irish whip. Oh, boom! Oh. Go airborne! A oh. rebound crossbody. There is something you don't see every day. Both ladies felt that one. And it don't look like, uh, it don't look like that count either, but nonetheless, they're both taking their time getting to their feet. Yeah, the attack has to be off a corner to count, uh, so kind of hard to count off the ropes. And Legata's got the right idea, airborne! Ooh! And there, I believe, will be a red corner, and yes, it is! 
So they are tied up now two and two. After that whisper in the wind. But here comes, oh, as Honey grabs that, grabs a rope after the rebound, and right now it seems like uh, Gata came right into a drop toe hold and is right, basically set up there on the ropes. Uh oh. I think the ropes are the only thing that's well, holding her up. Yeah. Here. Pumping the crowd up a little more. Here she goes off the ropes. And a tiger fin kick. Or 619, or as whatever guy that calls it, she kind of stole Goddess move there. And uh, basically, I guess she's on the was on the receiving end of her own move. Now I to the outside here. Looking to turn that right corner green. As she does with that vaulting Ooh. shooting that shooting star press off the top rope. Ooh. That means one more corner and Heidi's gonna be her new Hellcats champion. Took that corner away from Gata there. That's right. Right now, all Honey needs to do is do that, do an aerial move off that last corner, and she will be the Hellcats champion. There's a but kick we'll to the belly. Kata's trying to catch her breath after that vicious kick. Sure, after that barrage there, Honey's still trying to get her uh, get her bearings and catch her breath at that. Oh, oh what a spine buster! With a spine buster. All right, we are way too in sync, you two. <laughs> just don't call me Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> So you prefer Lance Bass then, huh? I don't like any of them. My generation was more into the new kids on the block. Oh yeah, I remember them. As God is setting up there on top of the number four turnbuckle, just waiting. Oh, and she hits the Ooh. sweet tooth! She just ended up evening the odds. Looks like she's fixing to go for that third one, though. And she, she does. Hits, and she hits that diving, flipping leg drop there onto Honey. And Honey just don't know what to do. The goddess seems to know what she's doing. She picks her up. Being that spinning back kick. Oh, and she hits the bubble gum. Looks like Honey is out. Yeah, 
I think little pot leaves are circling Honey's head after that one. Looks like Gata may be trying to go for that fourth corner. Uh oh. Wait a minute, Kendra's coming out. She just and she shoved. Cracks the champ. Ouch! I didn't know there were disqualifications in this match. Oh, as she goes up top and is doing what is called what she as a superplex, she called the she calls a stripperplex. I think that did land on Honey. But the ref so called the match. The... Michelle Schneider not happy about this. Uh oh. Go. Oh. She goes and do it two. again. Right on the honey. Hmm. Careful, baby. Yeah, doing something that my old friend the Gator Man would do. <laughs> oh, an Irish whips honey right into Michelle. Yeah, even the referees had enough of this. Yeah, she's spies her down with the back door DDT. Ooh. Can recall him for the mic. A lot of guys. Yeah, so, I have not it. forgotten what you, uh, Bitch Skull, and our pole match, and how you stole my title in my candy. The candy? Well, that's not a problem because I have all my profits from my running the Legata Humane Society scam. Ha ha ha. But you took the title and my candy, and I suppose you've eaten it all already. So I want your title, Gata, my title back. Payback is a bitch, and she's in the ring here now. So here is your notice. We are not done yet, pussycat. 
And thank you, Phantom Eyes. Go home now. Guess we'll see what those two ladies have in store for us now. I believe that's all the time we have today. Hope God and Honey will be all right after that assault. I know. Looks like Michelle will be. Got it back to her feet. Looks like she'll be okay. At least physically. Well, I hope everyone has enjoyed the show today. Make sure you are back here next Sunday at 2 p.m. SLT to see what our ladies have in store. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon and have a great week. Yep, be sure to tune in next time. Same Matt time, same Matt place, same Matt channel. This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links. Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions, and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering.